How you doing? Well, today I want to tell you a story about December the 4th, it's a Saturday, 1993, and it was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is just southeast, whoa, I like a rover dog, just southeast of Nashville. It was the Murphy Center, and we were going up to see Brother Kane do a show with Jackal. And uh, I, I, like, Damon had sent me a letter or two and some postcards and stuff. And he sent me a postcard to get backstage with. So we got uh, Rick and Mary Moreland. They wanted to go with us up there. We talked them into I can't remember. Anyway, they went with us. We got a room for that night and everything. So we drive up there. Well, we go out to the Murphy Center. We go in and watch Damon them play. Watch their whole show. They do a good job. I mean, it's a real good show. Really good. Uh, I do remember. <clears throat> I do remember Damon looked like he got kind of aggravated a couple of times while he's on the stage there. I don't know really what it was. And then I remember when. Anyway, so we go on. Me and Rick after da Damon them get through after Brother Kane gets off the stage. Uh, we go around back, and we see Damon's guitar tech that we've talked to before. Anyway, I showed him my postcard, so he carried us backstage. So he carries us into this big old room back there where uh, Damon and them were at this table. Him, Scott Collier, Roman Glick, and uh, uh, Glenn Maxey. <clears throat> so we go through the line and I get my guitar. I carried my guitar. I had a Gibson Marauder that I wanted to get autographed. So they autographed my guitar. We talked a little bit and I told him, I said, man, y'all had a great show. He said, well, he said, he was complaining, he said, because <clears throat> Jackal had kind of hoodooed him on the sound a few times. It kind of gotten, the sound was kind of weird a few times. So the way he talked, they couldn't hear good in the monitors, is what he said. I, You know, man, I had nothing to do with anything. I might not should even say nothing about it. That's been a long time ago. But anyway, uh, me and Rick, so we go through the line. We go over here, stand here. Next thing you know, me and Rick is talking to a Gibson representative from Gibson Guitars. And he's telling us a story about how if a guitar is five pounds off and this and that, they'd cut it up in a saw and throw them in the dumpster and all this. And we're like, man. So anyway, he's there because he's asking Damon. He gets to talking to Damon about the Nighthawk, Gibson Nighthawk. They just came out with the Nighthawk. And Damon was playing one. He, he played one a few of the shows there. <clears throat> and anyway... So we end up, we get, me and Rick walks out of there. We're just walking around the hallways in the Murphy Center. So we go around and walk up to the side of the stage. And we're just standing there. Of course, Jesse James Dupree, who sings for Jackal, looks over and sees us. And he just kind of waves and stuff a couple of times at us. I guess he thought we were somebody. In that time, I had long blonde hair, thin, people mistaken me on more than one occasion to be Greg Almond. And, of course, Greg Almond was a lot older than me now. But, well, he's dead now. But anyway, he was a lot older than me. But anyway, from a distance, it was still, you know, it was still kind of cool. So anyway, I don't know if he thought we were somebody or what. But anyway, he does, he waved at us a couple of times. And we were listening to the show. We thought it was cool. Me and Rick was talking about something. And at one point in the show, Jackal, Jesse James has a microphone stand that's made from a shotgun. So at, at one point of the show, he flips the microphone up and shoots that shotgun man we were standing there and he shot that shotgun man we like to turn a freaking cartwheel man it was so loud man it scared the fire out of us we stood there for a little while longer <clears throat> and after we'd stood there for a while this guy roadie guy comes over and says hey you guys can't stand right here you're gonna have to go back around or whatever so we go back out you know go around and <clears throat> We know we think back on how many times me and Lori saw Brother Kane. Uh, Rick and Mary saw him several times with us, but me and Lori went easily. We've seen him at least probably at least twenty times minimum, if not more. You know, we've seen him a bunch. We traveled around early nineties and saw them, and you know a few other bands, and went to a lot of shows. We just had a really great time. You know, I I remember those times you know so vividly a lot of times. And then sometimes I remember don't remember some shows at all. But anyway, 
I wanted to tell that little story because, you know, it's cool. You always get a little starstruck when you meet people that, you know, you hear their music on the radio, you see them, you never met them, you know. I really wish we could have hung around and met Jesse James and met the Jackal guys. I, I really wish, and we might could have if we'd have done it right, but we just, we were we were so awestruck, we done got to meet Brother Kane and talk to them and everything. So I want to tell that story. So this is another segment from the steering wheel commentator. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell.